one for you. And I'm doing it for Taffy. Hi, I'm Thalia. I am the newest volunteer assisting with programming at the Taffy Animation Festival, and I'm here with my friend Ken Schwartzman for a casual conversation with. Uh, Ken, do you want to tell our viewing audience about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm a film editor and I work in animation. Uh, I've been doing it, been in animation for like 20 years now, so uh, <laughs> I love it. It's what I know. Um, so Ken, how did you get, what, what got you started in the industry? This is kind of my, my Oh, you want to start way back? Let's, let's go way back in time because 20 years ago, uh, the industry was a very different beast. So I kind of want to yeah. hear how you got in. Well, I wasn't an animation guy. I was a film guy. And when I left college, I moved to Hollywood and I lived in LA. Someone saw you in the street and they were like, the guy. That guy. Yeah. I wish it were that I wish it were that easy because it wasn't. <laughs> it was a struggle. Um, but I started like uh, getting momentum as an assistant editor uh, and um, was working my way up and was trying to uh, move up the ranks to editor because there are different skills. Assistant editor organizes the material for the editor. The editor is the guy who does the creative work, and it's yeah, it's a lot of fun. So. Um, I, I, at some point, about 15 years into my assistant editing career, I decided I need to take a break. And I started saying no to every assistant editing job. It was really yeah. tough. And started interviewing for editing jobs. I went for a year. Maybe I picked up one little gig. Yeah. Well, can, you tell, can you tell us what your first editing gig was? Or was it like a... Like a well, I, uh, it's hard to say what my first, my first paid editing gig I, it may have been a semi-porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, we're all we're all yeah. here. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I had a yeah, relative yeah. who who called me and said, "Ken, I saw your movie in a hotel. What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> Why would they admit that? Oh I know. My it's like, wait, <laughs> like, it's more, yeah, yeah, I was looking for something to rub yeah. one off to, and I saw your movie. I saw your name in the credits. I liked it. I enjoyed it so thoroughly that I waited until the credits rolled, and I saw your name. Well, my <laughs> yeah. well, that's a that's exactly. a compliment, if nothing else. All right. Well, so yeah, that was my and that was my start in animation. The end. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you just okay. This is actually I think this is valuable information because. People that are looking to get in, into editing, people that are looking to get into edit, in other positions in the film industry, a yeah. lot of the time you get good at something and people are just like, oh yeah, you're very reliable in this role and they will just offer you that one thing. And until you, until you stop and say, yeah. no, I'm not doing this anymore, now I do that. Exactly. Like you have to let somebody give you a chance to be a mediocre editor that rather than a, staying a very good editing assistant for the rest of your life. Yeah, that is, and then that is not for the faint of heart. You've got to keep working to support yourself. And, you know, I guess I had enough money saved where I could take that risk, but I felt yeah. like I had to do it. So um, after spending a year interviewing and it's, you know, it's all who you know and it's through yeah. your friends and, you know, I didn't have an agent. I couldn't even get an agent. And then I got a call from a friend who was editing up at Pixar. It was the early yeah. days. And he had started Monsters, Inc. Oh. And, and he said he, he, needed an, he needed an associate editor to get them, help them get to a screening. Yeah. And I was in L.A. And Pixar is in Northern California and Emeryville near San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, I remember I, 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 I said, I got to think, think about that. I hung up. I was actually on a job, an editing job as a second yeah. editor. And then I thought, oh, fuck, no. I called about, yeah, I'll take the job. And I yeah, walked yeah, I mean, hall, And I quit the job that day. <laughs> Three days later, I was in San Francisco and uh, editing for Pixar. What was the what was the brain process there? You you hung up the phone. You're like, I got to think about this. And then you thought about it. And you're like, it's fucking Pixar. I know that was, that was exactly. <laughs> what am I doing? Why am I, you know, I just felt like I owe it to my current employer to give them two weeks notice. That no. was just too nice. And then I was like, <laughs> I cannot pass. And then I thought they'd be pissed. So I went to the boss and said, I, I'm leaving to work at Pixar. 
and he, and he said, and he, and he high fived me. So, yeah, high fived you. Oh we all want to do that. Okay, this this is another valuable bit of information, and this is something that I've heard from other people in the industry as well. There are there are going to be employers every once in a blue moon that you run across that are going to be like, no, you owe you owe me your loyalty. You don't. You don't. You need to take the opportunities that you're given to do what is best for you and best for your career. And anybody that's holding you back from that is, I mean, as much as well, like it, <laughs> with one caveat, yeah. you have to be careful where you burn your bridges. Yeah, you don't want to screw people over for sure. No, but no, no, you've got to be is, careful about this. I have never met, I've never met anybody or worked with anybody who moved on to something better and kind of left us hanging a little bit where we weren't happy for them to be doing something better. This isn't a matter of I'm leaving because I'm sick of you, you jerks. This is a yeah. matter of I got a golden opportunity. I got to yeah. chase it. Yeah. And there will be, you know, there will be people that, that say, oh no, this is terrible. Like, how could you I do know. this to us? Please just stay. But yeah. also the rest of us will be high-fiving you on your way out the door because we yeah. want our peers to do well. We want them to be successful. We want them to That's go. That's true. Most, the best most people, look, most people understand, especially when you're breaking out, yeah. when you're going from assistant to editing, that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah, um, that's so nice that note. worked out. So uh, <laughs> that's how I landed in animation. And it was the first time ever I had worked in animation. So I had to learn everything, the whole process. Yeah. So who and, was and the, course, do you remember who that was that gave you that call? That was um, Jim Stewart. He was, okay. an, he was an editor in LA working in TV and stuff. I think it was his first animated job too. Nice. I mean, Thank there were no animation <laughs> editors. Think about it. Before Toy Story, no one was doing well, feature Well, definitely not 3D. Except, except uh, a Disney handful Disney of uh, people at Disney. And back yeah. then, you, you know, I don't think editing then was what it is now. Hmm. Because it was 2D and, you know, they were just 2D like, is, everything there. is very planned out. You can't move cameras around. And it was also, <laughs> remember, it was also on film. You know, yeah. it wasn't as, it wasn't oh, as right. flexible and quick uh, and... and you know, versatile as uh, digital editing is, so. Good old film. You have yeah, to get a piece so of pair of scissors I, and cut it up, right? <laughs> when I moved up there, I mean, I had a little room in the hallway in an industrial park at Pixar. Um, it wasn't fancy then. And, and right next to me was the film room. They were still, in order us for to run the film in the screening room, they had to conform the film, the work print, to our cut, our digital cut. And so that was a, quite a job. That was probably the last time I saw film uh, anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you grateful that it's that it, that it's all digital now? Does it, it takes a big chunk out of that stuff? Yeah, because I was no, a, look, no all those years the I was days. an assistant. Most of them, I was a, I was working in film. I learned thirty five millimeter, all the all you know what you saw on you know the old pictures of all the all the trims hanging in all these yeah. bins. And if an editor wanted to add a frame to a shot, they would call me in. Ken, You'd have to go through the this, bin and find the one you frame. Find the frame. <laughs> and you, know, you had to be super organized. Was, you had like books, to these code books to reference the film. You had to like page through by hand. You had to go to boxes. And if it wasn't there, you'd look at the film bin and go, oh shit. And you'd yeah. pull all the trims out and see if anything fell to the bottom. And you'd go, oh, no. here it is. Here's your extra frame. So it could take an hour to add a frame, and in digital, yeah. it's like, uh, yes, uh, no, maybe no. Yes. You hit the you hit the plus key. <laughs> exactly. Boom. Yeah, I mean, so, I know yeah, there I are don't... people who are nostalgic. I'm glad. I'm glad that's not the case here. I really do I think, think it's made everyone's life easier. Although, although, although I got very good at my job in film because there's like all this manual labor involved in film syncing and film flying around and mm -hmm. the way you mark and the way you sync up slates. I mean, I was really proud of that. I had like where my Sharpies went. It was like, yeah, and, and you looked it, like you were doing sign language just now, by the way. With <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah. It's that physical and the rewinding and all that. Like I, I was so proud that I got it all done. And then it was like, no, no, you don't have to do any of that anymore. And that yeah. goes out the window <laughs> and now you're working on a computer. <laughs> But I love oh, computers. Man. I actually really took to it and it made it and made it fun. It made it fun again. I think it made the editing a lot easier. I am 90% sure I have a piece of spinach in my teeth and it's really buggy. You can see, see how it's on the feed. You can edit it out. <laughs> yeah, can... yeah. I'll just edit out this piece of film. I'm going to edit out me picking out this. Do I need to uh, wait for you to floss? No, I'm good. I think I got it. Oh, yeah, I did. All right, good.
I got anyway. like a this morning I <laughs> that noticed is, a bone. This is staying, by the way, in the interview. I'm gonna oh, leave that. <laughs> Just well, decided. I, I got a, like a small bone stuck in my tooth. This I discovered this morning. Like a fish bone or something? Yeah, I don't. I didn't have fish. I don't know where it came from. Can you get bones from potatoes? <laughs> no, I don't think potatoes have bones. Yeah, I could I be know, wrong. It came from something. So we got. To I'm not a biologist. Okay. I'm a cartoonist. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, <laughs> okay, so we? you jumped into Monsters Incorporated. Yeah. You got to use film for the last time before you threw it all out the door. Yeah, uh, on the Avid. So how, and you were in, you were at Pixar for a, for a while then. Yeah, well that one month job, they ended up asking me to stay to the end of uh, Monsters Inc. And it was like, nice. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> And not only that, because it was a uh, animation studio. Well, look, what was new to me was um, it was like, you mean I don't have to look for a job now for yeah. like a long time? I ended up staying there for twelve years. Yeah, in and Canada, that, was, that doesn't happen so much. It's, yeah, it's contract well, it didn't happen basically. anywhere. It didn't happen in yeah. LA. I mean, <laughs> you were a freelancer as yeah. an editor usually in LA, and you work for six months, and then you're calling up your friends again looking for work. <laughs> so it's always this. Uh, stressful struggle and you don't know when to go on vacation and yeah. all that and all and that was like the biggest change for me it was like not to yeah. worry about that that steady work um but also to be in the center of this am amazing place this whole new world surrounded by yeah. artists and technical people to phds um it was a, and, and also like run by steve jobs steve you know yeah. rubbing elbows with steve jobs it was you know an amazing thing and it was exciting for me to learn something new to learn about storyboards and how does yeah. layout work every step of the way so yeah and uh, yeah. and getting to bring ideas to the table right like yeah. not just thing. not just uh not just cutting film together and being like yeah. which frame of this do i use to tell this story but knowing that you can just make it up like especially early on yeah uh you're part of the writing press process. You're sort of in the brain of the writer the whole time. And mm. um, it's not true as a live action editor. You get the script and you get the footage and it's, you got to deal it's, with that. It's, with it's its been own. shot though. The, by the time you edit in it's film, shot. it's shot and there is no problem solving. But in animation, you have several cuts of the film while it's still being decided. Yeah. So there is a, a bit of, a bit of I mean, uh, people don't, power there. People don't realize how much time is spent in developing the story as an editor, you know, the storyboards yeah. go on typically for a couple of years. So you're in the middle of all the rewrites and you're right. You can chime in and ask for things. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, which is, I mean, that's, that's never nice. stops. It actually <laughs> never stops the whole production. You're constantly refining it and rewriting yeah. as we go. Even, even when it's being animated, I mean, working on other parts of the film. So that's, I mean, I love that part. I would miss that if I left animation. Um, just being part of the writing process. So you finished Monsters Incorporated. You stayed at Pixar for 12 years. What are the, why don't you tell our viewers what are the other films that you worked on? What, yeah, what, what was that, your favorite I, that you worked on okay. while you were at Pixar? It's really are you, are you, hard, you know, because they're me? all your babies. It's so yeah. true. Even the, even the hard ones and this, yeah, but uh, well, I, my, the next job after that was Cars because that was like yeah. the next film available at the studio and Look, I went from a few years on Monsters, Inc., knowing nothing about animation, being the second editor, to yeah. how, about you, how, would you, how would you like to be John Lasseter's lead editor? Oh! I was, like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't know if I could do it. I'm glad you have trust in me, but I'll jump in, and the worst that'll, you know, I'm fully expecting yeah. to be fired at some point, so here we go. <laughs> yeah, What's Cars, Cars was, like, not... Did it, it didn't do well in theaters, but wow, did it ever it did, do well it did, in... It did, it did well. It did really well. I feel like, and, I feel like it wasn't, it wasn't the explosive success. I saw it like four times in theaters, <laughs> so, but that was me watching animation over and over again. Well, um, I was on that job, I was on Cars for five years. Jeez. I know, it just kept going and going and going, but it was all new to me. It was, yeah. you know, I didn't mind, and we just like... Throw me the next idea. I'll cut it. 
and yeah you know, how we, different made, how different was it when it started to where it ended up the, the it's interesting at pixar they it seems like they have an idea of where they want to end up like a specific moment in the film they yeah. always knew what the arc would be of the of lightning yeah. McQueen. and, and they always knew it needs faster. to end at the finish line and he doesn't finish and push, push, pushes doc hudson across the line okay. like how do you get there and they were trying to figure out look there's there's all these films they have so many characters like yeah <laughs> what's their role we had a mayor who was big who's not there anymore it was sort of folded into sally's character we had like we went down this path where doc hudson kept having heart attacks and he <laughs> and and they had this whole thing of them jump starting them with batteries and like oh, all no. these crazy ideas we had uh I mean, I guess as long as they can jump start him again with the with the battery cable with the jumper cables, then it's yeah, not so bad. When you're like, he keeps having heart attacks, and I'm just sitting here like, oh no, that sounds awful. <laughs> I don't think he has. I don't think he gets a heart attack in the current yeah. version. The first thing I caught was them in a um, mo drive-in movie theater, and they were they were so in love with that idea, and that kind of went out the window eventually. Yeah. But the the first thing I cut was the movie itself that they were watching on the screen. Yeah, and it was, it was like this made-up spy movie, Finn Mc, with Finn McMissile. Is and that what this? They, that's in the sequel, right? Yeah, they put a pin <laughs> in that and and save that idea for the later film. Yeah, no, this is that's the thing I was saying earlier though is that I didn't think that Cars had the like theatrical explosive success of other Pixar films, but it, the the kind of like the identity, the brand, the like the world that they created. Yeah, right. They have the Cars, the Cars Two. I believe there's a third and planes. And right. then they have like this explosive toy line, like collectible toys that right. apparently are doing so, so well that everybody loves. And uh -huh. it's just like created this really endearing, uh, <laughs> endearing thing in this sort of uh, world that they, that they made that makes no sense, <laughs> it's just lived on forever, which is They really had to neat. create a world from scratch and make the cars make sense. Like, you know, it even when they were... to make sense. <laughs> well, remember the, the, People always thought about the the cars' faces as having their eyes on, on the, the yeah on the lights on, right on the lights and Chevron would do that yeah and, yeah the it was the gas commercials they had the and, little the beetle with the little yeah. blinking eyes and the mouth but was it, the but um, John thought they didn't really form a face so they said we're going to do it a different way the eyes are going to be on the windshield and then yeah. there's going to be a mouth and you know if you shoot it from different angles it it has to form a face in some way and they had to be careful about how they shot it. Three yeah. quarter was about as far as they could go. If they went to a side angle, it just looked weird to have yeah. this car talking. But there was a story artist who drew, was like into the uh, eyebrows and the shapes, you know? Yeah. And that stuck. They figured out how to put that in the physical world on the cars. So you'd yeah. see the eyebrows was... Well, it's kind of like the, the I, almost the eyelids inside the windshield, I remember them. Like, the, yeah. this is why I, I saw that movie windshield. so many times, was the, it was the way they acted. It was inside the windshield. Yeah. yeah, and that came from a story artist. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So there were all kinds of things. And then when I was editing, it was like, all right, you know, what's, me and the layout artist, like, what's a, what's a medium shot on a car? What's a close-up? You know? <laughs> and then when I'm cutting, what do they sound like? I can't have the engine running all the time. Because they got to talk over it. So yeah. I decided on my own, like when they're going slow, they, you, you just have this nice gravel. Yeah. Gravel so it's there. Maybe they're like an EV where they switch to gas when they start going really fast. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> and the funny thing is, when you watch it, you don't even think about that. No, you don't. <laughs> um, there were story artists really got into the idea of like, what's inside these cars? Oh, you know? no. Don't and, know. You know, post it up. All these ideas, little man or a giant yeah. brain spilling out. I remember out. seeing, yeah, like the inside the cab, I remember seeing an, a sketch from it. I I had the Art of Cars. I had a bunch of Art of, of different movies books. I'm oh. sure I had Art of Cars or something at one point. Because I remember seeing this drawing with the giant, with the brain inside the cab of the car. And then there was like a, a somebody cut it in half and it's like organs and stuff. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did yeah. publish that. You're right. Or... Yeah somewhere else. <laughs> was, yeah, I've seen lot, it at least. There was a lot to develop, you know, yeah. in the world. And I mean, same thing with Monsters, Inc. Like, how does this world work? You Monsters, know, they Inc. Had is a, re a real gem. They had to think about it from scratch. Like, how does Scream work? You know, they, they you know, the monsters are so heavy, so they built them more. Everything had to be heavier. Yeah. Built of, built of steel. And even the foley that they did, for, you know, was, was more weighty. Yeah. It was pretty cool. 
That is really cool. Yeah. So after Cars, so you did five years on Cars after <laughs> Monsters Incorporated finished, and then yeah, we had a big premiere down at. I mean, I got into. I, not that I was interested, but I learned more about NASCAR than I ever needed. You know? <laughs> we went on trips to a bunch of NASCAR races and got yeah. all access passes. For me, the most exciting thing was going into the director's booth, the, the guy who directed the, um, the Fox broadcast of the NASCAR oh. races. And I was able to sit in live while he has like all these millions of monitors and he's just, and he's just like, everything. go 12, zoom in here, gotta, gotta, oh, For man. me, as, you know, as a TV geek, that was pretty cool. Um, right? Oh, that sounds, uh, okay, so I, I saw like, you know, I got to, of that was so to cool. walk the track and learn about like, you know, on the track, they, they leave, the, the, the tires are softer than what we're used to driving. Yeah. So they leave these trails of what they call donuts, little pieces of rubber. And we were finding them on the track. All the art people were picking them up and taking pictures. Lots of research. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then the big premiere was at a NASCAR race in, Sh in Charlotte, no North Carolina. And, and they had like three screens. They played it the night before the big race for all the people that are staying there, you know, overnight. Oh, man. And they were like, so the premiere of Cars was for like 20,000 people. That is really cool. That's, oh, talk about, I mean, what a great in the spirit of the movie, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, what a great payoff to, to working so hard and everything. So yeah. that was an exciting time. That was my first film as a lead. Yeah. So what followed Cars? Uh, uh, I think Toy, yeah, Toy Story 3 was what was left. Jeez. It was like, all right, guess what? We're going to do a, a sequel. Ooh. Toy and Story. Uh, Toy Story 3, that's a, that's, that's a kind of a big one. Yeah, I know that. Um, the Toy Story that made everybody cry. How do you? Yeah, absolutely. I fi I watched it again just to remind myself. I haven't seen it in a while. I'm crying at different bits now. <laughs> you're crying because you're like before it was like oh that was so painful to work on it took me like a year and now it's, it's like oh the, the story actually <laughs> makes me cry now. <laughs> well, when we talk about my my favorite scene for me, it was giving away the toys to Bonnie. Yeah. You know. That was I so sweet. I felt like that brought, I don't know when the, the previous Toy Story came out, like 12 years before or something. So it just brought it all back, all in that moment. Yeah. You know, and all these toys, all they wanted was for Andy to care about them, and they thought he forgot. And then at the end, when he's giving it away. And he's like he's telling like the story. describing stories. in detail what every one of them meant. Yeah. That, to me, was the big, the big moment. And people were always crying in our screenings with, uh, in the story reels. Yeah. So I thought in, if it plays in story reels, imagine when it's animated. Yeah, um, it, that was a very sweet moment. That went, that turned out so well. Uh, totally. But people talk about the, the, the toys going into the fire. I think that surprised them. And for me, that like it took a tough couple days to figure out and cut. Yeah. <laughs> so this shows it like, ah, meh. I know. I'm done, like, it's I'm done with that. Done. That could go to production. <laughs> And it was like, oh, I missed. But actually, I did did a little work on that uh, because it kind of wasn't a scene. It was sort of like, all right, they they fall in this vortex, there's the flame, and then they then then they hold hands and go into it. And it felt like there wasn't anything to it. And I, uh, you know, I had to think about it for a while. And um, and then I realized, like, what you know, Woody, the first version of it, Woody gave up first because he's the leader. Mm -hmm. And he was originally when it was boarded, he put his hand out and started like saying, "Let's, we're all going down together." Yeah. But I thought, no, 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 he's the last one to give up. So I rearranged it so everyone yeah. else was giving up, and Woody was the one like, "I'm going to save this group." And he turns yeah. around and sees Buzz, and it's like, "No, we're going down." Yeah. I think that oh no! Better, it, you know? that was a good call. That was a really good <laughs> call to kind of keep him keep him fighting until until he's like. No, yeah. instead of instead of getting us out of this, I have to bring I'm, us into take us into it. I have to <laughs> be the one to to lead my crew into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I knew that they were gonna get out of it because there was no way the movie was gonna end that way. But I wasn't expecting that aliens ex machina <laughs> rescue. Literally an ex machina. Yeah. yeah they they was... love that. Um, but, you know, I don't know if you remember, I, I forgot that there, that the whole thing with the claws set up earlier in that movie, like at the beginning of that scene, when they end up at the dump, 
yeah. the first thing that happens are the the, the aliens. The aliens the run off because they see the claw. They yeah. see the claw, <laughs> the, the claw and they run off. So that yeah. we planted that seed. But there's also another one when they first go to Sunnyside. They're all like excited to meet all these toys at Sunnyside. And yeah. of course, the aliens find a crane and they go the claw. So yeah. we did our we did our job and set it up. Yeah. <laughs> It, it worked. It was it was a it was a pretty uh, a pretty surprising uh, scene. They got a little they got very close to those flames. <laughs> but now the thing that get it's one emotional wallop after another because you start with that, and then uh, I think the next thing that happens is the toys are in boxes at mm. home and they decide Aunt Woody's going to go off on his own to college, and the other toys decide it's okay to go to the attic and they go in the other box. Um, and that's kind of emotional because there's a freaking goodbye scene there. Mm -hmm. And then right on top of that, <laughs> the mother walks in with Andy and goes, oh my God, the room's empty. You've grown up. Oh, and it's <laughs> like all the parents in the room start crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it just keeps going like that. That's why it's so, I'm a, it's like stretched out for over 20 minutes. All these mm. emotional beats. It's great. Yeah. Even to the very end. Yeah, with the toy. Oh, when Andy yeah. drops off. So anyway, I love yeah. that stuff. I particularly like that, that you can, you know, with all, of, <laughs> with all the work and effort that goes into it, it's hard to pull off that kind of magic that makes it a, an emotional thing that everyone yeah. believes and is, you know, is with. So... After Toy Story 3, you said goodbye to Pixar. Did you take some time off or did you jump? Was it Illumination next or? I was planning on taking some time off and strangely I started getting all these calls. Like, like the <laughs> Weird. Oh, Everybody wanted to hire you. What, like little old me just said, I'm just a lead editor from Pixar. No big deal. Why would people be calling me? Well, that's what it feels <laughs> like. You live in this bubble. You have no idea. Yeah. And, and they just want to know where, you know, want to know what that magic is like we want it for our film yeah so uh what i did was i heard uh, of a, a friend who used to work at pixar he worked on despicable me in paris and i'm like i, I want to go to paris and I said, how do i get that job in paris <laughs> that's how mm. that happened oh and man I, yeah, sent, so I sent an email to the producer, um, and but strangely enough, I already had a vacation planned in Paris, like a month yeah. later. So I went and I met with her for lunch, and sh and she was, I mean, when before I went, she was saying, I don't, I don't have any, there's no openings for you, but then they made an opening for me, so <laughs> I stayed to help out on the Lorax. Nice. And worked in Paris, and then uh, they asked me back for Secret Life of Pets, so I yeah. ended up staying another so, few years. So when you were there working on Lorax, you, you moved to Paris, you were living there. Uh, yeah, I was there, that was like a six month gig. Okay, and you were, so were you gonna leave or had you left already and then you had to go back or did you just get to stay the whole time? I, I, I came back and had some months off and then um, thought about, gee, am I gonna, you know, it's actually a harder decision than you think to go to a foreign country where you don't speak the language. I mean, and Maybe was, for it some it people. <laughs> and we frantically were taking these French lessons and yeah. failing at it, but I was trying really hard. And then I went back. I took the job. Yeah. And it was and four years. For four years, yeah. Yeah. Your your uh your French French Paris tips were absolutely invaluable during my Annecy trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how I would have gotten by. And I speak French. And I was just like, I don't know any, I don't even know how to go to a restaurant and order food. <laughs> like, I, just, I just assume that every Canadian knows how to speak French. I guess that's not true. <laughs> well, I do speak French, but it's, it's, uh, it's the wrong kind of French. Mm. When I speak French to people in Paris, they look at me and they go, no, don't do that. They would just respond in English. They didn't, they didn't want to <laughs> speak to me. So... Yeah, so uh, we got to work yeah. on pets, which was just an idea when we started. It wasn't, yeah. I didn't see a script. Oh, and, wait a second. And it occurred to me, like, I just, oh, are you frozen? I think, no, no, I, I, I just had a thought because I was talking with Doran yesterday, another one of these casual conversations, and he was on Secret Life of Pets too. Um, the sequel. 
Yeah. Not, uh, not as well, but the sequel. Right. And he described the process when he started and he was like, they didn't have a script. They just said, draw, draw some ways to make pets funny. And I was like, Oh, that's great. And I, and I guess the, the first one was the same thing. You just had an idea. Let's make it a movie was, about um, It was a leap of faith. I realized like when you sign, when you sign up for a live action films, yeah. you know who's in it, you read the script, you know everything. Here was yeah. like, I know the director, um, <laughs> and there's mm -hmm. like this idea, but um, it wasn't cast yet. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what it would turn into. Yeah, and um, all they knew was they just were like, we're gonna make a movie about what pets do when people aren't home. That's exactly it. So it they just, frantically, we got a million ideas yeah. from the story artist, putting together montages. Um, go story and, artist, and go story then, artist. <laughs> we, were, we were in act one for like a full year. Is the, the yeah. At least that's the way I remember it with like, we, we just got to get the opening right. We got to get yeah. like, who are the characters? What's important here? What sets them off? And That's we didn't want them. Story. There was a lot of scenes with them coming in and just talking in the apartment. And yeah. the was saying, it's turning into a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We got to get them out yeah. the door and get some action in yeah. the film. So it was really imperative to get them out outside. Yeah, so, into um, the wide world. The whole, adventure started because the story and, the movie kind of focuses on like an apartment building and the pets that live in the one building like they're all kind of neighbors uh, yeah i think they know each other from the one yeah. building um, so yeah it would be like a friends episode or seinfeld yeah. if you stay, stay inside for <laughs> too long not make a movie um but we kept going with the story and they had this idea of the the uh, flushed pets they liked that mm -hmm. idea and that was like clearly like that that was where the movie needed to go. So yeah. we hung on to that. And then, it, um, yeah, and then it was, how do we, it, it, then it became all, all the, all the we were, it was a big management project. All these, all these characters that were like going through the city looking for, um, looking for Max and Duke. Yeah. Um, but I was looking at it today, you know, the biggest thing about pets I realized in terms of editing was all, all the improv. Every yeah. actor just threw out ideas that were better than the script. Well, <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't say that. They were, they were funnier than the script. And like, especially yeah. Kevin Hart, he, you gave him one line and he'd go on for 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I mean, he like is, he's a stand-up comedian. So that's yeah. his whole job is to was be great. funny. And then it was my job was like, well, I lo they loved that 10 minutes. How do I how do I insert that into the movie Yeah, and have it make sense? And so there was a lot of- He was of, that little bunny, right? The he little was the bunny. white bunny. Little he white bunny. revolutionary, yeah. <laughs> that whole thing, I don't know if you remember, it was always going, and Ricky, and yeah. he would like, they even, you know, he was, he, that was sort of invented on the spot. And then it yeah. was like, Ricky's funny, but what do we do about Ricky? And then they had to design a duck and, and like, what do we do with Ricky? And it became a thing. Um, so that's how a lot of it evolved. I mean, that, that works out all right. <laughs> I think the, the end results, the end results are, are, are charming and amusing. So it worked yeah, out. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so Secret Life of Pets, four years in Paris, and then you dragged your ass back to the United States. I know, that was like, tough, right? No offense, USA, USA, all the way. Um, but, <laughs> well, uh, but come on, well, four years no, in I Paris. Back, that was, <laughs> well, that's funny because I came back in August, the end of August, 2016, and two months later, Trump. Was oh God, what timing that year? So it was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> well, here we are, and then you came to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Great timing. No, wait, sorry. Yeah. So you you got back in 2016. Um, what was what was next? Were you just off for a couple of years, or well, I realized like finally get a vacation. I feel <laughs> like five years, four year jobs, and five year jobs were just like I just wanted a break from that. I missed yeah. my freelance life of having a break <laughs> every yeah. now and then. So I started taking um, uh, sh shorter jobs, yeah, and and it, it kind of got interesting. I helped out on the Willoughby's for six months in Canada. Yeah. I helped so, out on um, the Grinch for six months in LA. So the Willoughby's is where I met you. Mm -hmm. What was between, because Willoughby's was 2018. 
2019? Um, well, the first thing I did was um, I was editing a documentary. Okay, um, nice. About um, sexual childhood abuse. All of a sudden, this just got really sad. I'm laughing. I'm laughing at childhood abuse. <laughs> Sorry. <Anyways. laughs> and, um, no, that's okay. I, I just wasn't I prepared. Quite, it's called Rewind. It's actually, you can rent it, and it's a really good documentary. I don't, I think I have a small credit at the end because yeah, yeah. I, I could not figure out how to take 70 hours of footage and, oh. and build, you know, it was yeah. hard. It's a different skill set to build a documentary. Yeah. But it was sort of similar to an animation because you're kind of involved in the, the structure of the film and, yeah. uh, you know, the so how long were you, how long were you on the documentary for? I was like five, five months. Okay, just a little short contract. Long. Just yeah, like the absolute day. night and day different projects between going I come know, back to Paris, Secret Life of Pets, and you come back to the USA, USA, Trump gets elected and suddenly, I'm gonna work so six months on a, on, a, on a child molestation documentary. I gotta say it's tough uh, emotionally to work on tough subjects like that. But yeah, you know, I can and, imagine. And you get deeply involved, like I, uh, 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 you know, I got to know the filmmakers, I got to know his family. Um, I knew his story inside and out. I watched all his home movies. Like yeah. I was an expert on his life. Jesus. Uh, um, but you know, it's, it's an interesting challenge. I, I like documentaries. Uh, yeah. Hats off to those editors, man. Yeah. <laughs> hats off to the out. editors. They're, they're flying without a net. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so oh. anyway, yeah. I it, The rest is kind of a blur. I helped out on uh, Grinch yeah. for six months after that in, in L.A. to get them to the finish line. And I I was involved in the fun part. I was, um, um, you know, helping out with the mix and the music yeah. and stuff. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> Willoughby's and what else? Oh, I just did another Netflix film, Pinocchio with Guillermo oh, del Toro. Ooh. That was, that was my thing after Willoughby's. Like, uh, that was very exciting. And it was also uh, oh. stop motion. Yeah, is that is really cool. How did, how does that work? How does, how does stop motion differ from 3D? It's, it's pretty right. similar to me. You're still putting together story reels, but you don't, I think you, you kind of rush through the layout phase. Mm -hmm. they really use the story reels as their blueprint of what the shots will be. Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll do a couple of rehearsals and then boom, they shoot it and you can't ask That's them to it. reshoot it, you know, and in CG, yeah. they can fix things. Yeah, it mean, is what it is. We had our, we had our layout crew did, like taking our storyboards for Willoughby's and like, they're like, well, if we put the camera here though, because the sets exist and the pieces exist and you don't have to put it in a real room and take a photo of it to make sure that that shot is as cinematic as it can be with stop motion, you have to build it. They have the to build shot. it. So. I mean, I wish I was on a longer because uh, the pandemic kind of slowed things down. But well, while I was okay. there, we, um, you know, I was, we were in a warehouse and they were building the sets and- Oh, cool. My God, it's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> talented uh, people. I mean, real artistry going into every, I mean, everything you see on screen, they got a design. Yeah, we uh, had a storyboard artist from Willoughby's that moved on to that project as well. Um, Keely Prop. Keely, yep. Yeah, yeah so. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> was that? <laughs> Gavin Del Toro stole our people. <laughs> no, she, <laughs> she was finished. <laughs> You were too. <laughs> I think, I think, I the movie think was done. The um, was man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even aired pretty quickly. In inherited all our people. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, so working, I so I met you on Willoughby's in Vancouver. Uh, that was an absolute pleasure. You're a gem to work with, as far as I'm concerned. I uh, heard nothing but good things. About, oh, you did, about you? Oh, I said you're you're an absolute gem. Oh, to work you. With. Oh, <laughs> I'm complimenting you, heard about you now. You, work with me, you should know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, that was interesting because we, you know, I came on again as the movie they were trying to wrap like the last six months. And yeah. They just needed another pair of eyes. So you, were you on the Willoughby's before that last six month stretch? Yeah, I was, I was editing. They asked me to work for a month in LA okay. to, see, to see what my thoughts were, which was really cool and I was that when that was after Netflix picked it up or was that before? Oh no Netflix it was a Netflix film. 
yeah, no, it was Netflix like picked it up after it was already well into production. I actually worked. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. (laughs) Surprise, surprise. I worked on the Willoughby's before Netflix uh, picked it up. And I was on for a few months at the end as they were wrapping it up or wrapping up story. And then uh, a year later, they were like, hey, so we're finishing the Willoughby's again. (laughs) Because Netflix changed a bunch of stuff in the middle. And um, huh. yeah, and there were some things that stayed, uh, but a lot of sort of structural changes in the story. So they had to staff up again and, that, uh, and fix story. That's stuff. when I came on. I think I was yeah. the one that shook it up. I didn't yeah. know. You, see, you did some very good shooking. You guys made some really good calls, though. Oh, good. Yeah, I think that I think I had a lot of questions when I watched it because everything was so frantic and so quick. I was losing track of what the story was. Yeah, it was a tough thing to do because they were trying to stay true to the book, and it was sometimes a little bit. The book is a lot. There, I I went and bought the book because I was just like I wanted to know where this came from, and reading the book made sense of a lot of things that didn't make sense in the movie, (laughs) Uh, the earlier versions, and I was just like, oh, this is all. This is where this comes from, but the book is quite a like it's a lot. Like there's um, uh, Commander Melanoff has another child who gets lost in the in the mountains and and wanders for four years to come home. Right. And like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it very. Just shows sometimes you can't take the book literally and just no make it no it, it, it but it was to... delightful though it was so it was so uh it was so nice like i yeah. loved i loved the adaptation i loved how much things were their own thing yeah. and i mean i didn't realize that you were in on that netflix uh yeah kind of adjustment to much, story stuff i'm glad no one told me how much weight was on my shoulders <laughs> no pressure surprise. i'm gonna just tear, tear it apart and and um give some notes about story structure yeah, no, I mean, it was I, tough. It was hard yeah. to, to steer that movie and you know make those changes, and they knew yeah. they were up against the deadline. Um, well, but there I, was so much good material in there, like you know, always there was so yeah, much yeah. beautiful stuff in the movie, and it was really hard to let go of some of those little gems. Oh, yeah, it was a fun. Yeah, it has a subversive quality which I liked. Yeah. It was sort of the anti Pixar. <laughs> You know, but it really did. I mean, I think it turned out well. I've I've heard so many good things from people about it, and obviously, I have my own pro Willoughby bias. (laughs) All right, so can you tell our? Yeah, that's now we're here. So this is this is your whole career in a nutshell. I want you to tell me what's your what is your favorite thing about editing, or your least favorite thing about editing? Like, what is it that makes you feel the most fulfilled in doing the work? Oh gosh. And what is it that's the biggest struggle? Is this too, am I putting you on the spot here? No, not at all. Um, I'm going to let you think about this. I mean, the best thing is when when you're given the time to edit a scene and really think about what the mechanics of it is and make it work. Um, I love that putting the icing on the cake. I love editing music now. Yeah. And, uh, I don't even change a frame. I just try to find cues that work just right. I'm getting better yes. at that. Um, but also the worst thing is when they take that time away from me, when it's like, <laughs> oh, no, you got a day. It has to go into layout on Monday. Oh, no. And I just know, <laughs> like, I'm getting better at getting a first cut together because you have to. You have no time. Yeah. But I just have a hunch, like, this could have been better, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the pressure and the stress, it's, it's, there's so much pressure to constantly get these scenes out as fast as you can, you know? Um, that's the hard part. So, so time is so a factor. Crunch, crunch is basically the, the worst part, and anti-crunch is the best part. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's probably, I'm sure everybody would say that. I think that's got to be an industry-wide, like, I I don't think anyone has ever said that to me in quite such, in that manner, like, that their their favorite thing is oh. having enough time to do their job, and their least favorite thing is not having enough time to do their job. Yeah, but the that, thing, I, I think it's definitely the universal truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, the other thing that occurred to me is waiting for people to get good ideas you know Mm -hmm. a lot of these films you're going down the wrong path and you're just waiting for the 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 people in charge to like get get with it yeah (laughs) and fix the problems that you've been seeing for six months you know and you can only play you know as an editor you can only mention those things once or you're a pet 
you can't um, every day start the review with, you know, this has to be taken home. Right? So you live for a time. while. Oh. You plant the seed and wait and hope that it'll bloom six months <laughs> later. <laughs> that's that's people, diplomacy, the right? Come around. Hmm? That's the diplomacy there where you just are like, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. And... Diplomacy is key. Where's my cup of coffee as I sip my cup of... <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, so I, I warned you in advance. Uh, I want you to tell me a little bit what what inspires you as an editor. What are some of your uh, favorite films that that kind of um, creatively set the bar for you, and something that you think is notable for people to look at if they're interested in editing? Something they can see as an example of, of done right. You know, I have to go way back. Um, <laughs> Twenty five years, please. To the seventies. Yeah. Like, when people say, what's your favorite f film? I either say 2001 Space Odyssey because I grew up with it and yeah. I was young and was just like... There's no wrong answers here. ...in filmmaking. But the, 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 the big, I think, the big film that formed my sensibility is The Graduate. It's like, yeah, it's so... It's a little bit twisted. It's funny. But if you look at the editing, it's interesting. You can... Any scene you take out of the movie, there's something interesting going on. Yeah. Jump cuts, time cuts. That's really you know, cool. Uh, you know, uh, the writing is so crisp. It's so funny. That that is my sensibility. Nice. That's a that's a, a good one for anyone who hasn't seen it and or has seen it, but it's been yeah, a while look, to revisit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anything anything recent that you that you think stands out like? I, I <laughs> um, who's who's doing it right these days? Who's who's getting it right? I obviously have my own biases as visible on the walls behind me, but um, <laughs> my own opinions there. What was the what was the one that just won the Academy Award last year? The Korean family. Oh, that thing, yeah. is it Parasite? Parasite. I mean, I that was Parasite. like the first film in a long time that got me really excited about movies again. Spider Verse for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I watched yeah. that yesterday. I was poking around. Yeah. And I think it's on Netflix. And it was like, just watch the opening. I'm like, oh my God. It's like, very good. <laughs> in animation, that's, that's a game changer. Oh, that's, big the, time. that's the new bar. But yeah, I heard so many good things about Parasite, and then I never actually watched it because I'm a little trash baby and <laughs> can't take anything <laughs> seriously. Uh. So I'll definitely check that out. Um, I think we've been at this for, oh, I guess not, it's not been quite an hour, but, um, mm -hmm. just wondering if there's anything else you want to, want to chat about, uh, funny career stories or like weirdest thing that ever happened when, or <laughs> locked myself in the bathroom with a celebrity by accident, <laughs> like, you know, just. That has not, I don't know, that hasn't happened in a long time. I, I mean, <laughs> play it safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, to be that memorable for okay, the wrong yeah. reasons. We, well, we, we, don't have to, we don't have to go into that, but. <laughs> no, if I had a story, uh, you know, at hand, I would tell it. Okay. So how's the pandemic changed the way that you work? Are you well, working on a Are you working on a virtual uh, workstation, so like remotely connecting to a, a computer somewhere else, or are you working on your own computer? I did it both office? ways. On um, on Pinocchio, they set me up with my local Avid and copied over all the media I needed, mm -hmm. and then um, so that's one way to work. And that was I like working that way. It's all very quick. And reliable and then at the end of the day if you create any media or you import any music you have to upload it to the assistant and he has to distribute it to everyone yeah it's really you have to be super organized to be successful at well that. you are super organized person yeah. you had to be right yeah. back You're, in the day you have to be as an editor you can't lose stuff so yeah um that worked but then i just did a job for a few weeks to help out illumination on something that they're doing yeah. and they set me up differently they sent I was expecting them to send up a whole Avid with all these. And it's just a little box. They sent me a laptop. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> do with this. It does, and they said, oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be dialing into Santa Monica, and the Avid is in Santa Monica, and I'm just it, watching it locally. 
Is this a, was the lag, did that, did that even work? It's a little bit, well, it, it, it took some work because uh, I had to call the cable people out. They couldn't yeah. get my feet up fast enough. Oh, no. So I was like, I was using a friend's apartment. She was on a Zoom meetings in one corner, and I was on her kitchen table trying to edit <laughs> film on the dining room oh, table. Um, and I guess you can't sit in a room with the director over your shoulder. Um, no. Well, uh, what is it called? Um, so anyway, we, I got that all working, and I, I worked from home on that. And that, that, there was a little bit of a lag, and, but somehow it was workable. You were able to play back and maybe you had a, you know, you didn't know what you were going to get, but you'd play the cut and yeah, make adjustments. It just kind of somehow it was just, workable. Um, it but, sounds like uh, a nightmare to me, but it's um, just but There's also, I mean, there's things like CineSync where you're distributing your quick times and yeah. everyone can, you know, can look at your cut live and be on the phone. And then I forget the name of it, but there's another thing that looks like Zoom but it's like Zoom on steroids because it can play your cut in sync. So you can play your cut live. You got a bunch of people in the room. So and you I can think- change. So that's like the closest it comes to having the director in the room with you. We were using something like that for, so I just did my first um, episodic directing position on a show during the pandemic. And we were not able to do like at editor reviews, <laughs> like sit down and go over stuff and, and, and make adjustments oh, yeah. in real time. If there was more than one person in the room with the, with the, um, with the avid. So <laughs> it had to be just me and the, and the editor oh, yeah. and the supervising director couldn't be there at all because if there was, and the, and the showrunner couldn't be there because if yeah. there was anyone else in the room, it would lag for, Oh, for some of the participants and you never knew which one it would be a dice roll um so editing editing reviews were very very uh <laughs> were real pain in the butt yeah but luckily i had a very competent um editor on our show and he made it funny think, and it worked out so it was I think okay the, uh, the best default send the director a quick time you can email yeah. your notes or he gets on the phone with you well yeah we I like we, it when they just we were call just, me on the phone we were just doing uh quick times and i would be writing down my my notes based on the quick time but it's just so much easier if you can say can you can you shorten this can you can you lengthen this yeah. in there? and you can see it you know how that yeah. plays out because right. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of there are some hurdles <laughs> with this thing yeah i'm kind of it's looking forward to that. not having a pandemic anymore <laughs> it'll be really great i mean i do miss the the quick conversations you have with everyone you can't just yeah. you know it's you know, you get into a lot of minutiae with the director when they're in your room, but yeah. when you have a, a scheduled session, yeah, or it's email or phone, like you're not, it's not mm -hmm. as. Um, and you know, there's also like that. There's also a kind of. I feel like there's an immediacy to being there and to being able to say, "Can you?" or "Can't you?" and 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 getting a better feel of. Absolutely. what what is taking time and what's not taking time and do do we need to do this if like, especially like i said i was doing a tv show so it's different than a movie we don't have forever to make this work so is it worth it is it worth it to to, to yeah. pinch you I, in there i uh nowadays i like to show uh directors like partial cuts like in, yeah. in work in progress uh and, and you know you have to be the director has to be comfortable with you you both have to be comfortable about it to trust mm -hmm. each other that it's going to get to a good place because yeah. you can show them the bad version of it early. Yeah. But it's good because you have this conversation about whether you're on the right track. And I'm not doing that as much remotely. Like, I'm showing this final presentation with music. I want notes. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I what? imagine that you can't look over and be like, oh, yeah, this is just a thing. And they can't see your face as yeah. you say, no, no, don't worry. It's not finished. And, you know, half the time, <laughs> these are just ideas I'm presenting. They're not like, for me, it's not, I'm not 100% on board. Like, I found this piece of music. You tell me, is it going to work or not? Yeah, and you, you know, can't, and they like, can't see your face. They can't see your face when you're so, like, eh. So they get my cut and go, thumbs up. I'm like, all right, but well, we never had that conversation about like, <laughs> is, this better? is this like, I want a little yeah. bit of a debate, maybe. Yeah. Um, Fight me, <laughs> damn it! Fight me. <laughs> yeah. um, just, just enough, not too much. Oh man. <laughs> so. Uh, so, what's in the future, Kent? 
Ken, what are you going to do? What, what's next? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for something different. Like I'm not, whatever it is. I thought yeah. Pinocchio was different enough. Like, Oh, I've never worked in stop motion. Um, yeah. um, we'll see. I, I like working short on these short term gigs and offering <laughs> my opinion. Yay. But we'll, we'll see what comes along. It could be anything. Maybe it'll be a, another documentary. I don't know. Maybe I'll do <laughs> something. That'd be, that would be amazing. Yeah. And I look forward to seeing whatever it may be. I feel okay. like you could, I feel like you could hire yourself out as like an editorial consultant. Cons yeah, just considering, be... considering what you did on Willoughby's um, and the role. And like I said, I didn't even know that, that you were involved in LA before oh, wow. we started yeah. cutting things. I didn't know that that was you on that end. <laughs> It's I knew a, that was it's somebody. A, it's, a, it's a tough t position to be in, but, you know, tough because they've been living with it for so long and you're going to mm. offend a lot of people with anything you say. I mean, because yeah. in animation, you fall in love with what you have and you live with it for so long. It's hard yeah. to make changes. You got to, like, break the mold. Well, mold. that's where yeah. somebody comes in as, like, a consultant who hasn't been on the project for four yeah. years and comes in and says, here is what's not working for me. That's my value is like right? a, a fresh pair of eyes. If, not, if I'm the audience, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna yeah. tell you what my first impression was. And you can't argue with it. You can't stop and explain <laughs> it and say, well, clearly this makes sense because I'm like, I didn't get that. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I mean, I, I look forward to, to seeing what you do next. And well, uh, All right, we'll have yeah. another chat next year. For sure. And Thank obviously, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Do you know when that, when that's, going to be done it they're shooting oh now. well what's very different about it is um they have to shoot it now <laughs> i finished <laughs> i put all the reels up we figured it all out and they, they're just shooting it now so it's going to take a couple more years so oh geez that's right that's the slow part <laughs> i can't commit to a date they, they're saying 2021 could could be longer I mean, I guess it depends on how far away in the or how far apart people have to be in the in the warehouse or. Well, they are, yeah, they they were they slowly found a way to get back to work at the studio, mm -hmm. and they have all these. Because yeah, you can't remotely they, stop motion. You have all the you, you know, need all the things. The best, they, <laughs> the best they could do is maybe paint some props at home. They yeah, were doing yeah. that, you know, and building and working with puppets, but they got to get to the studio and do so it. So they're doing it. They're doing yeah. it. That's uh. That'll be a surprise to me when it's all done, because I just saw it in drawings. That's where I left it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to see how it, how it comes together in the end uh, for both you and Keely, and looking forward to seeing where the future takes you, Ken. Thank you so much for chatting with me, uh, and thank you so much for sharing your, your story with our, with our viewers, and uh, really appreciate you taking the time. So just Thank thanks, you. Ken. <laughs> thanks, Ken. I guess I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna hit the stop record button now. And Bye everybody, stay. have a great festival and <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs>